Now that we're building circuits that involve flip-flops and registers, it's no longer the case that we can reason about our circuit's output purely as a function of its input. Instead, the circuit's behavior depends both on its input and on the current state of the memory within the circuit. Because sequential circuits with memory components include a clock signal, we can think about the circuit in discrete time steps. This circuit contains two flip-flops, or a two-bit register. To figure out what this circuit will do, we need to consider the current status of these flip-flops. Let's first consider the case where the input to the circuit is zero, and both of the flip-flops are currently storing a zero. In this case, both of the XOR gates will compute a zero, and so a zero will be stored back into the flip-flops. That means on the next clock cycle, the state of the circuit will be the same as on the current clock cycle. If instead this top flip-flop is storing a 1, this XOR gate will XOR a 1 and a 0, so it will output 1, and we will store a 1 back into this flip-flop. In fact, if we go through all four possibilities for what the two flip-flops could be storing, we'll see that when the input is 0, the thing that will be stored in the flip-flops on the next time step never changes. When the input is a 1, and the flip-flops are currently storing 0, 0, this top output of 0 will be XOR with a 1, and will get a 1 as input to the top flip-flop on the next time step. At the same time, the 0 output here will be XOR with the 0 that comes out of this AND gate, and so we will get a 0 as input to the bottom flip-flop on the next time step. So when the clock next goes to 1, the flip-flops will each read their inputs, and our register will be storing 0, 1. When our flip-flops are storing 0, 1, the top XOR gate will compute the XOR of 1 and 1, which will give us a 0. The bottom XOR gate will now see a 0 from the bottom flip-flop and a 1 from this AND gate. So we'll get a 1 as input to this flip-flop. So on the next time step, we'll be storing 1, 0. You can check for yourself that if we keep ticking the clock with an input of 1, we will then transition to state 1, 1, and then back to 0, 0. And so these flip-flops are acting as a 2-bit counter, going from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 0, each time the clock ticks while the input is 1. The output of the circuit is always whatever is being output by the bottom flip-flop, which is our high order bit in the counter, and so the output will be 1 whenever our 2-bit register is storing a 2 or a 3. For circuits like this that store some internal state, we will use the abstraction of a finite state machine. The memory in this circuit can be in four different states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. So to draw a finite state machine for this circuit, we'll need to draw four nodes, one for each state. Then we can represent the behavior of this circuit by diagramming which state the circuit will transition to when it sees different inputs. If the flip-flops are currently storing 0, 0, so the circuit is in state 0, and it sees an input of 0, then on the next time step, the circuit will still be in state 0. So we draw an arrow from state 0 back to state 0 for the input 0. On the other hand, for the input 1, the circuit would transition from state 0 to state 1 because the flip-flops would now be storing 0, 1. So we draw an edge in our finite state diagram from 0 to 1. Whenever this circuit gets an input of 0, it remains in whatever state it was already in. So we can draw self-edges for the input 0. And as we also discussed, the circuit is acting as a counter, transitioning from state 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 0 each time it sees a 1. So we can draw in edges for these 1s. We can also indicate the output of the circuit on this diagram by writing in each state what the circuit outputs when it's in that state. In state 0, the circuit outputs a 0. Likewise, in state 1. In states 2 and 3, the bottom flip-flop is holding a 1, and so the circuit outputs a 1. And now we have an abstract representation as a finite state machine of our 2-bit counter circuit. When drawing a finite state machine diagram, it's common to indicate a start state, 
in terms of circuitry, this could correspond to the state that the memory would go to if we gave it a reset signal. We can now think about building finite state machines for different behavior that we might want a circuit to have. One common example is to recognize a particular sequence of inputs. For example, we might want a finite state machine that outputs 1 if the most recent three inputs have been 1, 0, 1, and outputs 0 otherwise. So for example, with this sequence of inputs, we would want the finite state machine to output a 1 in this case, and this case, and otherwise output 0. We always begin building a finite state machine with a start state. In the start state, our machine hasn't seen any inputs yet, so it certainly hasn't seen the input 1, 0, 1, so it should output 0. If our finite state machine is in the start state and it sees a 1, then that's making progress towards the case where we want to output a 1. So we should transition to a new state indicating that progress. If from this state we see a 0, we want to remember that so we can transition to yet another state. And we're still outputting 0 because we have not yet seen the sequence 1, 0, 1. Now our finite state machine has transitions from the start state for if it sees a 1 and then a 0 and then a 1, at which point we end up in a state where we're outputting 1. Let's give these states some labels to make them easier to talk about. Our finite state machine needs a transition arrow for every state and for every input that we might see when we're in that state. If we're in state 0 and we see an input of 0, then we haven't made any progress towards the subsequence that we're looking for, so it makes sense to stay in the start state. If we're in this state and we see a 1, then we can stay in this state because our most recent input was a 1, and if we subsequently see a 0, we'll be making progress towards our subsequence. From state 2, if we see a 0, that means that we've seen most recently a 1, and then a 0, and now another 0. And so we've lost all of the progress that we were making towards our subsequence 1, 0, 1. So we should go back to the start state if we see a 0 from state 2. From state 3, if we see a 0, then our last two inputs were a 1 and then a 0. And so we should go back to the state that represented having just seen a 1 and a 0, and that was state 2. On the other hand, if we see a 1 from this state, then the only progress that we have towards the subsequence 1, 0, 1 is that most recent input, and so we should go back to state 1. Now we have a complete representation of a finite state machine that will output 1 whenever its most recent three inputs were 1, 0, 1, and it'll output 0 otherwise. If we trace what state our finite state machine is in as it goes through this input, we should see that it will be in state 3 only in this, these two cases where we wanted to output a 1. We start in state 0, and if we see a 1, we transition to state 1. If we see another 1, we stay in state 1. If we're in state 1 and we see a 0, that takes us to state 2. But now seeing a 0 from state 2 takes us back to our start state. If we see a 1, we go to state 1, and then stay in state 1. Now we make progress to state 2, and from state 2 seeing a 1, we end up in state 3. From state 3, if we see a 1, we go to state 1. And so we see that our finite state machine only ends up in state 3, and therefore only outputs 1 in the cases where we've seen 1, 0, 1 most recently. Similar to how we've written truth tables for circuits, we can write a transition table for our finite state machine. The transition table records for each state and each input that we might see, what state do we transition to. If our finite state machine is in state 0 and receives an input of 0, its next state is 0. But if it sees an input of 1, then its next state is state 1. From state 1, a 0 transitions us to state 2, and a 1 keeps us in state 1. From state 2, a 0 sends us back to state 0, and a 1 sends us to state 3. And in state 3, a 0 takes us back to state 2, and a 1 takes us to state 1. The state diagram and the state transition table are two equivalent ways of describing a finite state machine.